pleasure to introduce Chang Xi, who is Professor of Medicine at UMass Medical School, Director of the Division of Epidemiology and Biostatistics, and also an adjunct professor at the school. Please. Thank you, Bert. <clears throat> uh, it's a great honor to participate in this symposium honoring uh, Demetrius. I would like to follow um, I would like to follow Pacona's talk by summarizing additional findings from the empirical cobra studies and the results from a related animal studies. The original hypothesis was published in Lancet in 1990, and subsequently, many epidemiological studies have provided evidence in support of the hypothesis. Some of them are depicted in this schema. Most notably are the findings from Swedish population registers by Anders and his co-workers on the reduced breast cancer risk in daughters born from a preclamptic pregnancy. Their risk was at half to one quarter of the risk for daughters born from a normotensive pregnancy. Additionally, many studies have also linked birth weight to breast cancer risk later in life. The prenatal origin hypothesis was further articulated to involve stem cell etiology, which states that breast cancer risk depends on the number and susceptibilities of mammary stem cells. With the inclusion of stem cells, a study idea was formed during a discussion in Dimitri's office in early 2000. As cold blood cells are fetal in origin, the study idea was to use umbilical cold blood to reflect the in utero environment and examine the effect of hormones and growth factors on cold blood stem cells, as well as the relation between cold blood stem cells and the gestational and birth characteristics. The umbilical cord blood samples were collected from eligible donors in two study cycles. The first cycle included only samples from normal deliveries. The second cycle added preclamptic samples. The majority of samples were collected at Tufts Medical Center, where Dr. Bill Strochniter uh, who is in the audience today, uh, served as the PI. We obtained information on maternal, gestational, and newborn characteristics from medical records as well as from questionnaires. Cold blood samples were processed within 24 hours of delivery to ensure the viability of stem cells. We first isolated the mononuclear cells from these samples and measured the concentration of cells with markers for hematopoietic stem cell in the early going and later endothelial progenitor cells and more recently putative breast stem cells. Our assays had to be updated periodically to keep pace with the increasing numbers of reported stem cell markers. This schema shows what we have been trying to learn from the analysis of these empirical cold blood samples. Pagona has described findings on three studies. First, the positive relation between 
hematopoietic stem cells and IGF-1, as well as other hormone and growth factors. Second, the positive relation between labels of core blood stem cell and the birth weight was also uh, described. Third, cells with putative breast stem cell markers can be detected in the cold blood and are positive, positively correlated with hematopoietic stem cell. In view of the findings from Swedish population-based studies on a reduced breast cancer risk associated with preeclampsia, we conducted a pilot study to compare protein expression between cold blood samples from preeclamptic pregnancy and that from normal tensive pregnancy. That's we identified proteins that were upregulated in preeclamptic samples or expressed only in preeclamptic samples as well as proteins that were downregulated in preeclamptic sample or expressed only in normal tensive samples. While preliminarily, the proteins identified in the proteomic screen, including alpha field proteins, among others, these proteins have many interesting properties that were reported in the literature. For example, anti-angiogenic property, anti-estrogenic, and as well as anti-tumorigenic properties. Some of the upregulated proteins were involved in clearing defective cells, and some downregulated proteins were linked to evading immune surveillance. One is abundant in breast stroma and is correlated with mammographic density. These are, are preliminary, but they are quite interesting. We have also compared level of stem cells between preclamptic and normal tensive cold blood samples. Preclamptic samples had lower levels of endothelial progenitor cells, as well as had the lower level of breast stem cells. Cells with EPKIN and the CD49F markers can be bipotent, and they give rise to luminal and bioepithelial lineage, as well as a luminal progenitor cell, and those progenitor cells later on can, serve, can be a precursor of different breast tumor subtype, such as basal type, lumina A, or lumina B. The above stu the study we just described are conducted in umbilical cold blood. And umbilical cold blood uh, is human, and some of the um, study questions cannot be readily answered uh, utilizing human sample. So we have conducted an animal experiment. Based, that's uh, depicted as D, based on the findings that IGF-1 is positively correlated with cold blood hematopoietic stem cells, we conducted any more experiment to examine directly the effect of IGF-1 on number of breast stem cells on the, on, the bre uh, on the mammary gland in the offspring. Two sets of experiments were conducted. First, we injected IGF-1 versus saline control into pregnant wild-type mice on the left and the compare number of breast stem cells in the mammary glands of the female offspring. Basically, you take the mammary gland of the uh, uh, newborn uh, uh, mice and grind them up, uh, make it into single cell suspension, and tag them with markers of stem cell and go through the flow cytometry analysis. 
And second, we compare the same two treatment, IGF-1 or saline control, in IGF-1 deficient mice. So that now this uh, set of mice uh, is now don't have uh, the endogenous IGF-1. So we now want to see what's the effect if we put back the IGF-1. That's on the right. Level of breast stem cells were higher in the groups that received five microgram of IGF-1 as compared with the controls. There could be several reasons why my five microgram uh, might be optimum uh, in, the, uh, in the dosage. In addition to cell, we also compared other measurements, such as length of ductal elongation, or numbers of different mammary structures, and uh, or as well as breast density. The group receiving five micrograms of IGF-1 injection, the female offspring consistently had higher levels of these measurements. We examined in the cold blood, we now come back to the cold blood, we examined the, the effect, effect of maternal physical activities on cold blood stem cells. This was the last analysis. <clears throat> this is the la last analysis. We discussed with Dimitri shortly before his MI. The analysis was done among COBRA sample from normal tensive pregnancy. And it was conducted with I means help. We found that pre-pregnancy vigorous exercise increase the levels of all four endothelial progenitor populations. Vigorous or moderate exercise during pregnancy was negatively correlated with levels of cells with EPCAN CD49 as well as CD24, CD29 breast stem cell markers. And this will be published uh, in the next uh, issue, and uh, the journal plan to highlight the finding. In summary, the results from the umbilical cobra studies <clears throat> and the related experimental studies have provided evidence in support of stem cell numbers being associated with perinatal breast cancer risk factor. With the um, opportunity to put this study together, it was amazing to me that uh, we have been fortunate so far in that with so many findings, there have been few, if any, that were difficult to interpret. Obviously, many questions remain to be explored. For example, further studies are needed to learn if there are epigenetic changes in the stem cells that are associated with prenatal breast cancer risk factor, such as a high versus low IGF-1 or preclamptic versus normal tensive samples. Additionally, experimental studies can be conducted using cell lineage tracing model to genetically label breast stem cells and track their developmental fate from the intrauterine environment until the development of breast cancer. I would like to acknowledge the effort of all the co-investigators in these studies And I would like to thank Demetrius 
for his guidance and encouragement through all these years. Thank you. Thank you very much. Perhaps stay there for a moment, and perhaps I invite Pagona also to come here. First of all, I would like to congratulate you on beautiful studies and, and very well presented. Thank you very much. I, we have, actually we don't, but we will make time for one or two questions <laughs> to Pagona and Chong. Whom may I invite? You can even speak, I think, without a microphone. Please, Lorelei. Okay, if Demetrius was here, he would tell you that this is our big problem with getting funded, because these days they want research that can be translated immediately to practice. Uh, we don't really know, particularly since we know that low birth weight is associated with other outcomes at the opposite direction. But as Demetrius used to say, we need to know the truth. I believe that even when the studies on uh, genes started and on SNPs, we didn't know how to use them, and already there have started to be some uh, applications in treatments and prevention. So at this moment, we are only trying to find the truth, hoping that this can be used somehow in the future. Other questions or comments? Chung, how are you going to go about the epigenetic studies? Perhaps tell us a little bit on, about what your plans are. Please. Yeah, it, it's, it's going to be a learning, uh, also uh, going to be learning experience for me. Uh, the uh, epigenetic, now they have uh, the profile, so we could uh, take the DNA uh, material from this uh, cell, and uh, we can uh, run through those. And there are all different, uh, all different um, uh, technique now to profile, uh, to sequence uh, for the whole genome to find the uh, epigenetic and then to make the comparison between uh, different uh, sample with different condition to see which part. And uh, for us, we will be very interested in looking at the, if there are any genetic changes that are attached to the uh, stem cell related gene or imprinting related genes. Mm, yeah. Well, I'm quite sure you will do well in the spirit of Dimitrios. Thank you both very much. <laughs>